morning, everyone. Jill here with North Texas Special Gardening, canning recipes, a little bit of everything. Woo wee. So guys, we didn't have a chance to trellis our cucumbers like we traditionally have done in the last six or seven years. And uh, I'm gonna show you what happened because we weren't able to trellis them. But first guys, it is blazing hot here in Texas. And uh, there were some folks that started shooting some fireworks down the street from us last night and I saw the sheriff respond quite quickly. We started hearing them about 10 till 10 and by 10 after 10, they had stopped. So I'm assuming that uh, they went on down there and, and talked to them and told them that there's a $2,000 fine for each firework found in possession. But uh, we are so hot and dry. Now Johnson County did get some rain uh, west and north of us and it was brief it certainly wasn't enough to saturate everything and keep any fires from happening but now let's get back to my cucumbers so guys this is what happened honestly i don't know that i'll trellis them ever again now there's a couple of caveats to this that you want to consider look at that we have already harvested probably over a hundred pounds of cucumbers. Greg and Pop uh, made dill pickle or spicy dill pickles, sweet relish, and bread and butter pickles. And we're gonna have a lot more. Oh my goodness, look, you missed one. Look at these. They are just doing fantastic in here. So I'm sure they'll be making more pickles here real soon. Um, it's still hard for me to stand up any length of time and try to do this, but there's bees. You see one in there and bees everywhere pollinating these things in this high tunnel. Now we also attribute, look at that, a lot of the success to, they're in this high tunnel and uh, that plastic cover has UV protection on it. See that one over there? Has UV protection on it, keeping these guys from burning up, but they have just exploded. Another caveat that you might wanna notice is they are growing on top of weed cloth, so they're not being exposed to the wet ground where sometimes that causes insects and it causes uh, food rotting. Now, Greg has a hose in here and it's a drip line so it's not saturating uh, the ground or the weed cloth. It's just going into each hole and keeping these things very well watered. So it looks like they'll be also canning more tomatoes this week, folks. Look at this. We have been blessed tremendously and again, these are the Enrosa type. We'll grow these again. They have done well in this heat. Um, some of them are splitting because we are just harvesting them as quickly as we can get them and trying to can them as quickly as we can get them. Now, Greg made ketchup and he made spaghetti sauce and he's made some salsa. So unbelievable tomato harvest this year. And we are so thankful for that. And again, we also attribute the success of all of these to the UV in this plastic. Now they're looking a little worn for the ride, but they're still going. Now we don't see any new buds, so we don't think uh, that we're gonna see any new fruit come up soon, but we're gonna try to keep them alive until cooler weather comes in. That may be a chore, honestly, for all of us. But uh, yeah, they're hanging on. And I can honestly say that I've had one of my best years for squash and zucchini inside this high tunnel. I, we weren't gonna grow in here. We weren't gonna grow the squash and zucchini in the high tunnel. But last year we had such success with just one plant. We went ahead and gave it a shot and I'm not seeing any squash bugs in here. And so they are continuing to prosper. And you can see my okra over there starting to come up. So we should have a bountiful harvest of okra because it does love this heat. These are my zucchini plants, guys. So my getting around is still 
uh, inhibited a little bit. I kind of maybe walked around a little bit too much day before yesterday and yesterday because I'm dragging my left leg a little bit more, but I'm continuing to work on it and get more mobile. But I wanted to do a quick video. So I've made, it, made my way back up to the porch and wanted to tell you guys some other things that we've done differently this year. Now you all know if you've been following me that Greg is going the regenerative soil, the regenerative gardening method. And uh, it's quite in depth. I will do an, uh, an interview with him here soon and he can tell you what all we've done. But some of the main things that we changed this season um, is we used to get our soil from a very popular place that's supposed to be organic and you guys all know the name i'm not going to mention it but for three years in a row we got terrible soil and that it we just hardly didn't get anything out of our garden and so we quit using them we even filled our raised beds with it and we got nothing nothing out of our raised beds so we had to go in and modify it and uh, one of the things we did not use was cow manure and um, just a brief description of why we are getting away from cow manure is uh, cow manure normally comes from your dairies and your uh, I guess your slaughterhouses or your your where cows are raised for whatever reason not grass-fed um, and even grass-fed with the herbicides um, that they put on the grass is terribly bad for your garden and they also use, you may know, those mineral tubs and those mineral licks and salt licks, which goes through uh, the cow system. And that salt gets in your soil and it kills your biology. Um, they give them antibiotics. So the antibiotics go in and kill your good, uh, the good biology of your soil. And um, the salt will ruin it. The herbicides will ruin it. And I'll tell you that I've had several people comment to me in person um, who have come out here and bought some of our vegetables that their garden did absolutely next year, uh, awful this year. And they made it a point to say, I went and bought all these bags of manure from Lowe's and, and, um, and nothing, I got nothing. They didn't get tomatoes, they didn't get cucumbers. And so we talked about cow manure and how uh, bad it is for your soil for so many reasons unless you're raising your own cattle and uh, you know what they're eating and, and you know that they are organically raised. And so there's all kinds of bad things in your cow manure. Now you can use chicken manure, which seems to be way better for your soil. Another thing that we did differently, which made me extremely nervous, um, extremely, I can't tell you the anxiety I had at the beginning of this planting season. When Greg planted that cover crop in that large high tunnel um, amongst he didn't he planted it around the same time we planted our tomatoes and so it was growing at the same time um, made me extremely nervous um, I like very clear defined rows I like clean gardens but I'm beginning to think guys that his cover crop just really put a lot of nutrients back into the soil at the same time those tomatoes were growing and you just saw them man they are just really coming up so we're probably going to continue that although it makes me very nervous um it has helped everything um the tomatoes have just prospered the peppers are starting to come in the cucumbers you saw them i mean they're just going haywire in there so there's a couple of things that we changed this year we didn't trellis the cucumbers we're not trellising our melons either because we really feel like the leaves are shielding the fruit and uh, even our melons are growing on top of, of weed cloth in most of the area some of it it's not and so the weed cloth is keeping uh, the damp and the moisture from rotting away at the fruit and, and the insects. Greg has studied so hard, so hard. He spends two or three hours a day studying um, this regenerative gardening method. And uh, he is learning all about the minerals in the soil and stuff like the cover crops and um, how all of this is, is being beneficial to us. And guys, we have not used any kind of commercial nitrogen in our garden at all this year and everything seems to be prospering super well so start looking into that and start reading up on that um, because we really don't feel like the fertilizer shortage is going to affect us in the years to come because we are making these changes in our garden and these are changes you can make 
in a, a large garden like we have or even a small garden. Now, if you had a very large farm, it, it still works. We've been doing uh, some investigating or some uh, studying on it. It still works. And, and uh, crops that are right next to each other, the ones that are using the regenerative method are prospering so much better than the ones that are using the commercial chemicals and herbicides. So one of the last things I want to leave you with is that um, bugs, aphids, and other bugs do not attack healthy plants. Sounds so weird, sounds so bizarre, and I know a lot of you are getting grasshopper uh, infestations, and believe it or not, grasshoppers are usually at the end of the chain, and it means that you have a pretty healthy plant, but there's a certain threshold you need to get over to keep the grasshoppers from feeding on uh, your garden and we will go more over that. I really want to sit down and pick Greg's brain and do an interview with him so he can give you more of this information. But give you just a good example is um, the other day we had um, little beetles on the pepper plants and Greg went out there with just a mixture of minerals, just a mixture of minerals and sprayed the plants and did a root drench and they were gone the next day. We didn't have to use any herbicide. We didn't have to use any insecticide. And they were gone because bugs do not like healthy plants. Thank the Lord. So we are pushing hard in this regenerative method. And I think you need to start looking at it now. You need to start evaluating it um, because it has helped us a lot this year. So anyway, that's the rundown, guys. Stay tuned. Hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out on all these changes that we've made and the progress that we're making very rapidly. Greg did it very rapid. Sometimes it takes some time, but he just really put his heart and soul into this. And I'm so thankful he did. And I'm so thankful he didn't listen to me at the beginning of the, of the gardening season. So stay tuned. God bless you all. Hit this like button and uh, be sure and leave us a comment below on what you think about the regenerative soil method and gardening method. And uh, be sure and share our videos. Now, um, I have noticed that whenever I go to my subscriptions, I'm not seeing many of your videos. And um, so I have to go to your channel just to find out what you guys have put out. Um, so you might be having the same situation with mine. Be sure and check your subscription status and, and check with us moment, uh, periodically to see um, if we've posted any new videos. You can see it is burning up hot out here. God bless you all and more to come. Talk to you soon.